I'm here with Annette Cluett at the Red Hat Summit. One of the things that I'm hearing quite a bit about is the OpenShift storage containers. And so what does it mean when somebody who's used to managing OpenShift is now responsible for managing storage? Well, thanks, thanks for uh, asking me about that because it, it is, it's really a new thing. Um, storage has always been sort of off on its own and you know you just sort of ask for it and it appears or it doesn't appear. Um, now what we're looking at is hosting it as an OpenShift workload and we've been doing it uh, for a while now using uh, Gluster and Hecate and that has you know been good for a lot of situations but as we move forward into the OpenShift, uh, the new OpenShift uh, 4 environment and with using operators um, we want to look to make a lot of the, the sort of things that you do have to do to maintain storage. You have to upgrade it, you have to add more storage, and one very important thing that um, I have to say we haven't really dealt with yet uh, in, um, with the OpenShift container storage is how to back up and restore. So how are people going to do upgrades and, and do this backup and restore if, they, if they're not really, if storage isn't their wheelhouse? We'll be releasing in an operator based environment where it's, it's called the uh, Rook operator, which is an upstream project right now. And the, the Rook operator, just like any of the operators, can observe and you have something called a cluster resource definition, which is the, how the cluster is configured for Ceph, which is our storage we're, we're managing with Rook. And if I go into the, to the definition and li literally just OC edit or cube cuddle edit, and I say instead of this amount of storage, you have this storage, boom, 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 immediately the, the, the operator sees that, it goes in, it, it knows what to do to add the storage, it adds it to the cluster, and then essentially you've, you've got more storage in your cluster. So that, that's a pretty easy thing for uh, an OpenShift admin to do. And it's pretty understandable, oh, I just need more storage. I tell the operator where the storage is and it adds it. How, how is that different than what they have to do today? Um, today, to add storage in the, in the OpenShift 3 environment, you, you pretty much have to use Hecate, um, and you have to use command line. And you have to pretty much know, you know what, what you're doing. Um, you have to add it in a certain way. So it's all you pushing, you doing manual operations and then verifying that. Whereas with, with the operator paradigm, you, know, you just basically just add it and say, here's a new device. And after that, you're out of it and, until you go in and just verify, are you OK? Yeah, I'm OK. So today, there's a lot of manual steps yes. and, and margin for error. Yes, yes. And on the up upgrade front, it's even much more likely. So in the in the current world, if I want to upgrade Gluster to do something called a rolling upgrade, to take each node down manually myself, re um, re basically restart the the Gluster pods, and then I have to wait for it to heal itself, which can sometimes take hours. So in the new world, I again go into my cluster, my uh, custom resource definition. I one one version of Ceph. I edit, add a new version of stuff, hit save, boom, boom, boom. All the pods restart on the, their own. Uh, grab the, the new containerized version, and then within a short time, I can go in and query to see that's okay. That, that sounds a lot more efficient. Yes, yes. So the last thing is um, what I call data protection, backup and restore. Another really important um, thing that. Uh, storage admin, now OpenShift admin needs to do. We have a way of sort of going in and doing bash scripts and grabbing the volumes and snapshotting them and mounting them and then having something like Commvault back up the mounting. Anyway, it's, it's pretty much brute force, but we can do it. In the, in the new world, through the container um, storage interface, CSI, which is a new way to plug storage into OpenShift, we'll be able to, um, ha at a Kubernetes level, be able to snapshot via snapshot, they're called snapshot classes, point that class to a, a, a Ceph pool and be able to ha basically have the snapshots go to one Ceph pool and then we can back that pool up to something like Commvault or NetBackup or something else. So, and this will all be administrated via Kubernetes, via these um, 
new resource definitions, not having to you know, write bash scripts or do things like that. You will be able to recover via Kubernetes as well. But you still have to have something to back up to, right? You don't want to back, if your backup is inside OpenShift, you don't really have a backup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, That's so, just a copy. Yeah, so, there, <laughs> so we are looking, and I'm not as involved in that, but we are looking, you know, there will need to be integration with, with true backup vendors um, to like, where does the data go? Right, so it doesn't. But it's having it a minute, having it done via Kubernetes or via an OpenShift is, is much much easier. Sounds like you're uh, making the OpenShift administrators' lives easier. Well, I I hope so, especially if if they now have to deal with the storage as well. Yes. All right. Well, thanks, Annette. All right. Thank you.